Yo, what is going on, homies? It's your boy, Stumped, back for another OPTC video, and it is that time of the month once again where we end the month with the tier list. The legend tier list for November 2021 is not made yet. We're gonna we're gonna put it together, but we're gonna discuss the, the new legends that have released within the last month. And I gotta say, there is a lot to talk about. There's a lot to talk about. First and foremost, though, this is the tier list from last month. We are going to uh, do a bit of uh, chopping and changing and moving some characters around as there's a lot of characters to talk about this month. There's a lot of characters. So buckle yourselves in because this may be a bit of a long one because there are a lot of changes that I do want to make to the tier list already. And then we do need to incorporate the new legends. But before we do continue, as always, huge shout out to the OPTC tier list maker. Link will be in the description and to the OPTC database for the images provided as well. Big shout out to you guys. Both links will be in the description. Make sure to go check them out. And as always, this is my personal opinion. Just be mindful of that. It may be subjective, but at the same time, this is my personal opinion playing the game for a very long period of time having all of these legends, testing all of these legends, and using all of these legends. So, I do like to rank the characters as a whole on usability. That is my big criteria. How useful is the character when clearing content? For me, I don't really incorporate stuff like PvP into their kit, because that's a whole separate game mode. But, if you do guys want to do it, I include that. I am looking at doing a PvP tier list. I'm still trying to figure out the logistics of it, whether I do a team-based tier list, character-based tier list... Uh, because I feel like PvP is sort of its own separate area where with these types of characters we're looking at sort of how fast they can clear content, how safe they can clear content, their reliability, their captain abilities, their special power, all of that sort of stuff comes into play when we are looking at these particular characters. So let's take a look at last month's tier list and let's see what we did change. So first of all I did move Smoker into support, he should have been there from the beginning, I, I sort of just did a bit of an oversight. This sort of section down here, we have the needs a 6 plus or a dookie section. These characters either have a 6 plus and they suck, or they don't yet have a 6 plus and they sort of need one like really badly. The support category, these characters here, you basically just want to max out their supports, leave them in their leave them in your box and just call it a day. Characters like Bardo, V2 Lore, and V1 Zoro, like these two characters I'm actually missing on my Japan account. Just a little bit annoying because their supports are quite useful. So these characters here are all very, very good. Get them to level 5 support. But what I want to do is I actually want to move this Enel. I want to actually move him up into like A tier captain. Just because what he can do with Psy, like the Psy being like the best class in the, or color in the game. He does do end of turn damage, which is great to get around stuff like resilience. And he auto proxy special at the start of the quest. Most of the time I'm using him for his special ability. But if you are running Psy and you need a color affinity boost or you need to get around resilience, he's actually pretty decent as a captain. Most of the time you probably use him as a sub still, but like he's a pretty decent captain in, in, like all in all. Other than that, I think everyone else is fine to stay in the support because that's basically what they're used for. This section here says niche and content requires. This case like here is like if you want to use them, they can. Or they're just really, really good for some particular piece of content. Nothing really needs to change here um, per se. Uh, I think everyone's pretty fine. You've got like the quality of life legends like Jack and Buggy. They just like give you more XP. They give you extra drops. So they're fine there. Blackbeard going through barriers. Uh, the damage null from like Robin and the healing of like Marco and Chirihoshi Manchuri. The delay mechanic of Brook, like the zombie teams with Brook. Uh, sorry, the delay with Katakuri, that sort of stuff there too. A tier sub. So these particular characters right here are all very good sub options, but usually there's probably going to be better options there. Now, what I want to do here is in this A tier captain section, I do want to drop uh, V2 Akainu. I think V2 Akainu definitely is a little bit outdated nowadays. And honestly, as a sub, like I really don't like use them, like use him too much. Honestly, for me, he kind of needs a 6 plus. Like he kind of needs a 6 plus quite badly, mainly because like he makes strength orbs and uh, int orbs, which is great, but if you don't have a way on like an int team to make those strength orbs matching, you are relying on a lot of RNG. So for me, I feel like he really needs a six plus. With the Alkaji, uh, Alkaji sees an attack booster, right? Where where is he? So he's up here. And like, there's a lot of characters that can make quick orbs beneficial if you're running like a side team. So he's still really really good as a sub, and mainly because he's an attack booster, uh, he kind of works a little bit nicer than this Akainu. Um, this Sabo we will talk about in a second because he just got his six plus. Uh, as for everyone else, we're kind of like pretty much like we're, we're pretty much chilling here to be honest. Like everyone else is kind of fine. I feel like Judge can probably move down into niche and content when, when content requires. You don't really ever need like that bind, but he's still like very very good if you do need that. Shanks is another one. V two Shanks he can probably be moved down. These particular guy like Shanks honestly probably needs a six plus two. Um, he's still really really good, but like you just sort of never really seem to be using him right. It can still can be used, but like you never seem to be really using. I feel like he needs a six plus pretty badly. 
Um, looking at this A tier subsection, I think everyone else is fine besides, besides maybe Boa. She's like a color affinity booster, like, and she's just kind of, she's kind of whatever. Like, there's not a lot of like, like real need for her. She's only a two times color affinity booster too. I thought she was higher. I'm oh, sorry. Yeah. So like, she's kind of like, is what it is. When it comes to Tess, uh, Tessera, he can probably move down into support nowadays. That's pretty much all I'm using him for. Like, he's not really that good of a sub, like, anymore. So we definitely want to sort of put him into support. As for the rest of these characters, Crack is still pretty good. Big Mom, Prometheus, Zeus can still be used very, very nicely. Nami and Robin are great. And this Kuzan, he's pretty good when you can use him. Same with the Arlong. Arlong, you could probably argue, like, when the content requires you want to use Arlong. Because, like, you're mainly using him for his special cooldown. And then that attack boost is just like a, like a little cherry on top. So... I feel like Arlong's just like when the content requires. If you can use the Hody special to get around fear and stuff like that as well. Having a look at some of these other characters now. Um, Blackbeard. He needs to go straight down into Dookie. Like, I understand what you can do with Blackbeard. But like, why? There's just so many better options out there for Driven and Powerhouse. Like, you're never using this Blackbeard. Like, just don't even worry about him. He's just like, whatever. The category, he still holds viability with his, like, his guaranteed delay. You have the Paralysis Despair Remember with uh, Luffy. This Sabo, as much as I don't like this Sabo, he's like... A good solid hybrid option uh, option for stuff like Bullet. Sweet Generals, they have utility. Shanks, I'm going to move down into a sub because that's pretty much where you're using him nowadays under something like Law or um, Mihawk, the other Halloween slashes. That's basically where Shanks falls out. Fuck Stump. You know, you guys know the drill. Uh, as for the Blackbeard, I feel like Blackbeard sort of now where like when the content requires. The only place I'm using this Blackbeard is Worst Generation and that's basically it. I don't have anywhere else I would be using him. So I feel like... Have, being an A-tier a captain, whilst you can use him as an A-tier captain, he's slow, he's kind of outdated, and Int just has an array of, array of options. An array of options. Looking at the S-tier subs now, let's have a look at S-tier sub here. What can we sort of change around here? I feel like everyone here is pretty good. Uh, I feel like you're not really using this Akainu anymore, and if you want to, you're pretty much using him as like an, a captain. Yes and no, but I feel like he's not as good as some of these other subs. If you can get his like ability off, He's great, but as a captain, like, you need to use strength decks and quick. He, he kind of gets cucked by dual units and stuff like that, so you could probably argue that he's just, like, an A-tier sub. And if you can't get that conditional off, he's definitely better than this Kuzan, I feel, but, like, this Kuzan can have more viability when there is, like, when there is conditionals. As for Sanji and Judge, I feel like they're pretty good when to get around special line. Like, this, um, what's his name? Uh, Garb's still very, very strong. I kind of want to move... <sighs> Everyone else seems to be fairly fairly solid here. I, I don't think there's like too many other changes that I would make. Um, everyone else is kind of kind of sitting nicely for me here in terms of the sub potential. I guess Bardo Cavendish you could probably drop. I guess the Driven's just so strong that I'm, I'm happy to leave them there. Same with like Luffy and uh, Law. I guess they've sort of just been outdated. 2.5 Rainbow Orbs is still nice, but I always find that you're probably just finding better options and other Luffy Luffy or Law characters for the team. So there's also stuff like that. As for the S tier captains, we're definitely going to make some changes here. Boa, I'm going to move down to A tier captain. Basically, just because she's so slow. Like, she has one of the best super types in the game. Uh, but her special doesn't provide too much else besides the mirror ability and healing. Which is great. But we do need to take speed into account here when we are looking at these characters. And nowadays, she's just she's just sort of a little bit like, how you going? Like, this Sabo, actually, I'm just going to put in when content requires. Because, like, the only time you're using this Sabo is, like, when you're doing, like, you when you're forced to use this Sabo, I guess. Or for stuff like Kazuna. So, yeah. I, I'm going to drop him. Just because I, like, I think the Sweet Generals are just way better than this Sabo. He has good damage output though. But as for Boa, she's just a little bit slow. So, I feel like I'm going to drop her down to AT Captain. Because I think like these characters up here are just like, they are way better. Besides this guy right here. Like this guy right here. He needs to... For me, he's going to drop into AT Sub at best. I know a lot of people do like this Marco. But for me, this Marco is dookie. I do understand he's got a good utility special. He's got great healing. He's a chain booster. He's a color affinity booster. Booster, so if I'm going to put Halloween Shanks in AT sub, I guess you could argue that Marco deserves to be here. But at least with Shanks, like, you get both. Like, with Marco, you don't get both. But the healing's quite nice. I don't rate him as a captain. He's super janky because his super typing is, like, below 50%, and then he gets the auto heal below 30%. And if you get, like, a HP cut of 80%, you get the auto heal. You don't get the super typing, which is kind of stupid. So, he's really wonky when it comes to that sort of unit. Very similar to how, like, Shanks is quite wonky as well, I guess. So, for me... Marco's an A-tier sub at best. You're only ever, I'm only ever using him as a sub, and because of that, we'll drop him down here. As for everyone else, we're sort of sitting pretty hunky-dory. I feel like Magellan can probably drop to A-tier captain. He has good utility with his paralysis removal, um, but, like, I prefer 
running Magellan over Kaido. Um, just, I think Kaido's super overrated. When Kaido works, though, Kaido works. Like, I just recently used him on the uh, co-op Kazuna for Japan, and he was the best option for a captain. So, like, when he works, he works. But in terms of, like, the paralysis removal that Magellan can have, uh, I, I would rather run Magellan every day of the week. But when Kaido works, again, for, like, Garp challenges and stuff like that, he is very, very strong. Most of the time, I'm using him as a sub, but as a captain, he can have viability in stuff like Garp challenges where there isn't a lot of full immunity, when there isn't a lot of stuff like normal attacks only. He can shine where Magellan sort of doesn't, but Magellan can sort of hold his own when it comes to sort of those longer end runs. And just because he has that paralysis removal in his kit, I do want to put him in A-tier captain, or I guess you could argue that he's in, like, when content requires, uh, very similar to, like... Um, yeah, I, I guess, like, worst case scenario, I put him in A-tier sub, just because he has that utility of, like, bind, and um, he's a good color affinity booster. What's that? What else does he do? He does he does bind, and he does something else. Maybe it's just bind. Maybe it's just bind. To me, I, I like him more than Miguel, uh, than Kaido, but, like, I do understand, like, when Kaido works, Kaido is better, but the whole thing is, like, Kaido has to work. So, both of them, for me, are kind of dookie. Uh, both of them are very overrated in my eyes. And I feel like sort of dropping them down here is like definitely, definitely where they need to be. Like for me, I just, I don't, I just don't rate Kylo at all. Another character I really don't rate is this particular unit right here. Uh, the only reason I'm going to keep him on AT Captain is because he has free spirit in his kit and Psy. Like, his only use is treasure map. Like, that's the only use he has. Uh, actually, I'm going to keep Kylo an ST Captain purely because I have this Kylo up here. And the same argument, right? Like, when this Kylo works, I still believe this is the best, like, V1 Kylo is the best Kylo. Uh, but I guess, like, when this Kaido works, he's definitely the way to go. But this Sanji, going back to this Sanji, I don't rate this Sanji. I don't rate him at all. I, I think he's pretty garbage. Honestly, for a treasure map character, the first treasure map character, he had a little bit of hype, but just no. Roger's a better option. Luffy Sanji's a better option. Versus Shanks is a better option. Goddamn, Luffy, Last Tap Luffy's a goddamn better option. And you guys know how I feel about Last Tap Luffy. So, for that reason, he's going to go down to AT Captain because he does hold viability in... Um, treasure map, but still, I understand he can be fast, but I would still rather run Boa. I would rather run Enel as a, as a side captain. But that's just me. That's just me. As for everything else, S plus subs, everything else is fine here. Uh, S plus subs, let's have a look. Let's see if we can move anything. Uh, I feel like we could probably drop, um, Sabo Koala down here. Sabo Koala have kind of dropped off a little bit. They're still really good, and they still do remove, like, that uh, that annoying orb enable, but we just don't see it anymore. They are 2.25 attack boost for um, two very good classes of Free Spirit and Cerebrals, but they've just dropped off in sort of seeing how much play they have. Um, the reason, like, yeah, they're still really good, though, but, like, I, I just don't see myself running them as much. They still have a good switch ability, too, which is great, but again, I I've definitely seen them drop off. Very similar to um, this Odin as well. Odin sort of dropped off a little bit. He did get a little bit of resurgence with um, the Vivi that we will talk about, um, but again, like, there's just areas where you just don't see yourself running this Odin. I guess you could argue he's an S tier captain, uh, and he can, like, be good because he has strength in his kit and stuff like that. Um, but, like, most of the time you're using Odin as a sub, and, uh, very rarely you're actually using him because he doesn't give, like, matching orbs and stuff, and you're running him as a hybrid option with something like Bullet or with something like the Sweet 3 or something like that, so... I do want to drop him down because I don't think he's as good as, as a sub or something like Wano Law or Germa and stuff like that. So I definitely want to bring him down. Uh, Sanji and Pudding definitely d hold their rightful place uh, there with their complete removal of um, damage reduction and threshold. These two units here are the, the best aging units. Corazon's basically here because of his Sailor abilities. His Sailor abilities are so cooked. The Paralysis and the Special Bind removal is awesome. The uh, Ray Rage, uh, Rayleigh has the Sailor ability to get cooldowns as well, which is great. Uh, V2 Shirahoshi Mancherry is just, like, an argument you could put them in amazing, but, like, we're gonna leave them here for now, because you only use them as a sub. Pudding, absolute god, even with her 6 plus, she's good. Uh, Sobber Mask and V1 Viva Record definitely needs to stay. As for Shanks, Kuro, and Germa as well, they are absolutely fine. Uh, let's have a look here at S plus Captains. The only thing I want to change in S plus Captain is Sugar. I feel like Sugar can drop to S plus Sub. Sugar's aging with real grace, like real, real grace. She's a very, very good unit, and she's great for stuff like Kazuna. Um, she's just awesome. She's just really, really good. But in terms of captain potential, she just, you're just not really using her as a captain anymore. 4.5 is still nice when you when you are in the toy bear form, but it's just 
it's something that you just don't use her very much anymore. Snake Man's still an absolute weapon. Moria, everyone knows how good Moria is. And like, shout out to the GGP boys with their um, award show. I understand lots of people think Moria's underrated. I don't think Moria's underrated. We all knew how good Moria was when he first came out. Everyone's talking about how cool he was. It's just because he just got overlooked by other driven powerhouse characters. And for that reason, he, he's staying in S+. Zoro... Zoro's another character that doesn't get enough love. He doesn't get enough um, chatter. Whenever you're building a dex team, in terms of speed and like hybriding up with like Kaido and stuff, Zoro's awesome. Zoro always finds a way. Removing special binds great. Having color affinity in his kit and his um, orb boost. He's just sort of aging very, very nicely as well. Especially with Queen and stuff like that coming out too. Kaido, V1 Kaido, still the best Kaido in the game. Don't even at me. Like honestly, like he's easily the best Kaido in the game. Um, where do I have Verse Kaido on this team? I don't think I have... Where's Verse Kaido? Oh, there he is, right there. Um, Verse Kaido is still an S-plus captain, but for me, like, I, I don't use this Verse Kaido at all. Uh, I'm always using um, this particular Kaido over uh, Verse Kaido. Verse Big Mom's just infinitely better than Verse Kaido in my eyes. Honestly, I feel like dropping him down here, but I definitely think he's better than something like Odin and Bullet. Um, so I guess we'll leave him here for now. As for the amazing units, definitely going to be dropping uh, Luffy Sanji into S-plus sub. Luffy Sanji, like... A lot of people give them a lot of slack, but they are still so good. Their switch ability is still one of the best in the game. When you use their special, you get the heal first, and then you apply the attack boost. So 99% of the time, you're actually getting the 2.5 times attack. I think a lot of people look over that, and people think, oh, well, I don't have full HP. I use their special. I'm only getting two times attack. Incorrect. They get the heal first, which is a big heal. Then they get the attack boost. So unless you have the recovery down debuff or something like that, most of the time, you're getting the 2.5 times attack. Just be mindful of that. They are very, very good. Uh, like, unfortunately, though, you are using them as a sub most of the time. So for that reason, we're going to drop them down. As for Verse, Wipe It, and Shanks, I think they still hold their own. Queen and King, whilst I do think Queen is better of the two, I have found myself using King quite a lot since I did pull him on Global. Um, when I pulled him on Japan, I really didn't have, like, much use for him. I could appreciate how good he was, but I was always using Queen. On Global, obviously, I don't have Queen, but I can see how good King is for speedrunning content. These two are just amazing when it comes to speedrunning content. They have the um, Fear, so they can get the Special Reverse, and they're just really, really nice. Um, Queen was great. Obviously, if you guys saw Subconsi's uh, HP cutting team for the uh, new Super Boss, Queen was a big, big part of that, so big shout-out to Subconsi for that one. Fly Tank Pirates, again, another really underrated legend. I don't think a lot of people talk about them, right? They have an attack boost to Driven, which is unparalleled because Driven is so good. You can get matching orbs with them. They lock those, super lock those orbs, and you are just hunky-dory good to go. Law, I definitely think holds his own in amazing, but last tap Luffy, I'm sorry. Shout out to whoever cares about this unit because this unit just dropped off the planet after his release. People were talking about this being the best of the Onigashima trio, then Law, and then Kid. I was always on the Kid train of like the most fun, and then like Luffy being the best, and then Law, like being okay but then lord came out and said he's going through uh full immunity so then law sort of jumped at the end of the day kid's the best that's like let's be real this guy right here he he the best of the three don't even at me let me know in the comment section below who you think the best of the three is but for me it goes kid law luffy so for that reason luffy's getting dropped to s plus captain simple as that other than that i think the rest of that sort of category is fine uh, I don't think too much changing needs to happen there, as they are all very good units. Up here is my top five. Um, Akainu vs. Ace. They're just awesome. Like, they are just aging so well. Same with Kid. Kid's doing an absolute, like, number as Driven just keeps getting better and better. For me, he's the most fun legend on Global right now. Um, he easily. Ace Sabo. For me, Ace Sabo have dropped off a little bit. Purely because Super Switch characters, they do take a lot of time to build up. But if you ever need Special Blind, if you ever need Blind, you need Despair... You can use them as a captain. You can use them as a sub. They just, they're awesome. Like, they're, they're so good. Slap them under Roger. You get the super typing of Roger. And as you guys know, this guy right here, he's still God. Like, he'd be up here if he could. But, like, look, at the end of the day, he is um, number, num numero uno, Mr. Roger. If I could get him to be number one, that'd be great. So, that's the tier list. Um, I think that's all the changes that I really want to make. Um, nothing else sort of screaming out to me, uh, per se. Um... This sort of S plus sub here, I feel like we could probably move a little bit. But for now, I, I think that we're pretty much hunky-dory. I don't think we spoke about Bonnie. Bonnie's uh, fine as an S plus captain to me. She gets around all that fear and special bind and all that nasty stuff. Um, special reverse. She's just a great uh, unit. A lot, a lot of people use her, but she's awesome for me. Like, really, really good. Um, especially when you're looking for, like, free spirit teams and stuff like that too. Because she's a rainbow character as well. So, let's take a look at what characters we are going to talk about this month. So, we are going to slide down here. What characters did get released? At the start of the month, we did get 
the big one, well, the big three, I should say. We did get Yamato, we did get Page 1 Ulti, and we did get Yamato 6 Plus. So we did actually gloss over and we did skip Reiju and um, Vivi. We will talk about them because they actually come out tomorrow as of me recording this video. So I feel like we should probably talk about them first because on Japan, that's how they were sort of released. And then we can get into the big three that were like the Super Sugos. We also got the 6 plus of... Um, what's his name? Sabo. 6 plus Dex Sabo. And then we also got Toki and Straw Hat. So like I said... A lot of legends to talk about right now. A lot of characters that we do need to touch on. So, with that said, let's dive in. Let's dive in to the Kazuna that what did that did just uh, finish over on the on the global side of the game. You could get the skulls to this guy right here that is Dex Sabo. Dex Sabo got a huge, huge buff. And I am going to leave this Dex Sabo that you see underneath Dex Sabo here because they are two different units. And I actually still see play for the regular Sabo because he's an orb booster and a chain locker for free spirits, fighters, and shooter characters. And he's still really, really good. You don't see him play that much. And this particular Sabo is now an attack booster, a chain boost, and gives that ignite ability, which is great for stuff like worst generation when you are running decks. But he's really not essential. For that reason, I think he's an AT sub. Like, he did get a monstrous buff, but, like, at the end of the day, like, I still don't see myself using this character a lot on Japan. The Ignite ability is great, and he works amazingly under Verse Ace. But for me, like, I just, I really don't see myself using him as much as, like, you probably see how good he is on paper. So, for that reason, he's just going to sit here in A tier sub, unfortunately. No, no, no gripes with the unit. Um, but, like, I just, again, I personally just don't see myself using him as much. And that's the big thing, is usability. He has a great special... Uh, I guess, like, you could argue that he's definitely an S-tier sub. I, I feel like, actually, probably he's an S-tier sub. Because he's an attack booster, because he's a chain booster, he works great with that Ignite. You can get around Resilience and stuff like that if uh, you need be. So, he's, he's pretty good. He got a, did get a buff from this particular unit here. So, I feel like we need to put him above that unit uh, there. So, S-tier sub, great spot for him. An attack boost is always better than an orb boost. Chain boost, you can stack with uh, Verse Ace's uh, chain boundary effect. So, then you can do shenanigans there. Uh, so that works really nicely as well. With that Kazuna... Alright, so back to it. Now, after Kazuna... Um, well, with that Kazuna was meant to be... Was the release of Toki and the Straw Hat Pirates. Now, I'm going to touch on the Straw Hat Pirates first. Because I like I want to take a little bit of time to discuss Toki. So the Straw Hat Pirates are really, really cool. They did come out on One Piece Day on Japan. And then they did just recently come out after the Kazuna for Global. Now, they're quite a good unit. They are Rainbow Attack Booster. They're a far, uh, five times captain to themselves, I'm pretty sure. Uh, provide you at full HP. Their special is absolutely insane. They have rainbow attack. They can um, they can give remove uh, defense up and damage reduction. They can remove five turns of any debuff, which is really really cool. Uh, and they are a very very strong unit. As a sub, they work amazingly. As a leader, they work amazingly. Uh, but the downside with them is you have to be at full HP. I'm a big fan of them because you have units like this particular unit right here. Uh, and that way, you can actually easily get yourself to max HP. With the overheal mechanic, you can stay at rainbow. And then you can use stuff like the Toki Toki ability, which I will discuss in a second, to actually just give yourself absolute monstrous damage, very similar to how you can use it with Bullet as well. The downside to the Straw Hats is they are all the Straw Hats. So you lose representation of like 10 different characters, which kind of sucks. But in saying that as well, you get a lot of supports. A lot of supports. Any support that goes on any Straw Hat, you can actually use on this particular unit, which is really, really cool. So with that, they do have a lot of viability. And once you can, if you can slot them on a team, they work absolutely amazingly. The downside to them is, as, as well is Psy has a lot of very, very good options already. Uh, but they have a lot of power output. They have a lot of utility. They have a, like, they're just very, very good. They do a lot of stuff with their special. And uh, they are an incredible, incredible unit. So they are amazing. They're not exactly god tier for me because they're like, getting them at full HP all the time can be a bit of a... It's not hard, but it can be a bit of a gripe, um, especially if you get, like, recovery down and stuff like that as well. They do heal as well. They give damage reduction, so there is that as well. Uh, but they're a bit of, like, a bit more of a big brain unit than anything else. So with that, they are amazing, but they're just not there in terms of that sort of god tier level. Talking about the next character, uh, we did have Toki. Toki did come out with the Kazuna, and Toki is an absolute god for me. For me, Toki sits roughly about... Yeah, like this. Toki sits about here for me. So she he sits second or third in terms of like the best and most valuable unit on global at the moment. The downside to Toki, we'll talk about the big downside to her first, is 
timing her Toki Toki ability. So the way she works is you, you activate the Toki Toki ability, you select two units, and then they are basically immune to anything that can affect that character, whether it be bind, despair, special reverse, special bind, blow away, captain swap, anything like that affects the character per se, they just basically get two turns of immunity for it. So you can actually carry that into a next stage. After the two turns of passes, she gets a 3.5 times attack boost for those two characters and a 3.5 times orb boost, which is a lot of damage. It's the max amount of damage in the game. But you do need to make sure that you can actually kill on that turn, go into the next stage, get that 3.5 attack to wipe the next stage, and avoid the debuffs if that's what you're looking at doing. The downside I find to her is I always forget to use her special when I need to. But her damage output is the highest in the game. She has a very, very good captain ability, 4.75 rainbow captain. Her super typing gives herself five turns of cooldown so you can spam that Toki Toki ability. She gives cold affinity to strength. So when you basically get her as captain, if you are like coming up against dex content, you use like the 3.5 attack, 3.5 orb, two times color affinity, fill the rest of the team out with like utility and like chain boosting shenanigans and whatnot. And she's very, very good. She's a slasher. She's a free spirit. She has great, great classes. Strength is a very strong character. And this character is just absolutely busted. Really good sub potential. Really good captain potential. One of the best characters in the game. And Kazuna, your legends, as you guys know, are just absolutely cracked. They are always cracked and they always have been. Look at all the Kazuna characters. They're all sitting up the top here. You've got Ace Sabo, Kazuna, uh, Toki. You've got the Fire Tank Pirates. And then you've got uh, Sanji and Pudding down here who just still hold great sub potential. So, like, nevertheless, like, Toki, one of the most valuable units in my eyes. Uh, and if you have her, be very, very happy because she makes Kazunas moving forward very easy. She makes super bosses very, very easy on uh, the Japan. She's always a go-to just to output a lot more damage. Uh, but again, I wouldn't go too crazy for her on her banners uh, because she does pop up pretty much on every single Kazuna banner moving forward. But if you did pull her, be very, very happy. She is one of the best legends in the game in my eyes and uh, a very, very good character moving forward. Onto the next characters that are about to release on the global side of the game, or they will be out as of this video going live, is Reiju and Vivi. Now, in my eyes, these two characters is the most overrated character and one of the most underrated characters. We're going to start with the most overrated character. That is Reiju. I'm going to put Reiju right here in niche and content requires. I'm trying to do a showcase of Reiju right now, and it is hard. She is an int powerhouse cerebral character. She's three turns of attack boost, which is great. And her super typing, as long as you have cerebral and powerhouse characters on the team, gives an orb boost to those characters. She also has an ability where she auto procs her special when you get um, poisoned she can rotate the poison slots and when this character got released everyone's like oh this new mechanic is so cool it's so cracked it's gonna be so good but there's just no content that, that gives you poison and it, it's very rare you get that auto trigger of the special so for that reason i'm gonna start where the content requires because like there's so many other better int characters that i would be running on, on as a captain moving forward and uh i like i never use this character like i literally never use her the only place she shines is dofi 2 and even then like there's other characters that are just doing it better. We have supports that can remove poison. There's no poison sockets that have that with the new mechanic of the poison sockets that comes alongside her. There's no content that has that moving forward, or there hasn't been since the release of this character. I'd rather run Halloween Shanks as a captain. You've got Katakuri. You've got Halloween Mihawk and Law. You've got Bonnie. You've got Big Mum. You've got Verse Whitebeard. Like, all of these int characters are just way better options than this Reiju. She doesn't provide any matching orbs. She doesn't provide healing. She doesn't provide damage reduction. She's just three turns of a 2.25 attack boost and a, two, and a two times orb boost, provided you uh, satisfy her conditions. And with that, she just kind of, eh. Like, she just real, eh. And for me, she's super overrated because, like, everyone was so hyped when this character released. She had that ability to, like, bypass this crazy mechanic and for that like for that like she's just niche and when content requires the only time i'm finding myself using her again is when there's poison sockets or when there's poison with the poison sockets i think i might touch on this now if you have a character that removes poison it actually rotates poison sockets into matching sockets for you guys as well so just be mindful when we do get arena caesar this character is quite good for that or if you have another way around it you can do that as well but raju sorry sorry raju Moving on to the next character, which I believe is the most underrated character of that batch, is Vivi. Vivi's going straight up here into Amazing. Vivi is an absolute weapon. Honestly, she's so close to God tier, uh, but she's just a little bit off. So her captain is a 5 times captain to Strength, Free Spirit, and Cerebral. That basically speaks for itself. One of the best colors, two of the best classes, absolutely great. Also in her captain, she removes Special Bind. 
10 turns of special bind. Any character, if you have a look at this tier list, any character that can remove special bind sits nicely at the top here. You've got Zoro up here. You've got Shanks crew over here. You've got this VV here. Any character that can remove special bind in their kit is always fighting their way to the top. Bind removal, special bind removal is always better than despair removal in my eyes. While despair removal is great, the special bind and bind is just a little bit nicer because it has more viability when you get it applied to the particular units that can actually remove it for the rest of your crew. If you get special minded and you don't have special mind removal as a sailor or your fear, this character can just get rid of it for you. It's super, super nice. She's basically V2 Snake Man, but better. Because she's a five times captain, she holds better viability to other classes. And with her special, she not only rotates orbs, but she rotates block orbs. And she gives three turns of a 2.25 orb boost. Now, I've been rambling on, and this is what makes Verse Shanks so good in my eyes, is any character that can rotate orbs unconditionally, no matter what they are, block, bomb, obviously besides like super bomb and all that sort of stuff, any character that can do that and then give an orb boost is very, very powerful. When I do team building, I like to look at attack and chain lock and base stat boost now, but a character that can do an orb boost and guarantee you a full board of orbs is like a four times boost compared to like a two times attack boost, right? So it is very, very powerful. Not only that, but she locks your orbs then you carry them into the next turn. It's super, super nice. And if you already have an orb boost, she extends it by two turns and she adds 0.25. So if you're using something like Odin, you can get a 2.75 orb boost, turn that into a four turns, rotate all those orbs into Wano slots uh, if you if you uh, have like a full strength team. And it just all works super hunky-dory, which is really, really cool. She's a really good, like massive weapon. As a captain, she can not only remove the special bind, but she also has a two times attack boost to strength, free spirit, and cerebrals, provided you have a full free spirit and cerebral team, which is very easy to do as strength have a lot of support for those two classes as well. She's an absolute weapon. And if you compare her to Raiju, like there is not even a competition in my eyes to this Raiju, like not even a competition. So at the end of the day, Unfortunately, Raju's just... She, she got the short end of the stick, unfortunately. Like, a massive short end of the stick. And when Vivi came out, I was looking at Vivi like, yo, what is going on with this unit? She is cracked. But everyone had eyes for Raju. And, unfortunately, the content that sort of came out after that just didn't really satisfy the needs of that Raju per se. So, it is what it is. Uh, if you do are doing some summons, I don't recommend summoning. But if you are doing some summon, you walk away with that Vivi. Be very, very happy because she's a very, very good unit. All right, on to the big three now. On to the big three. We are going to talk about uh, Page 1 Ulti, and then we'll talk about the Super Sugos last. Page 1 Ulti. Page 1 Ulti are interesting. They are a driven powerhouse captain. They are another Super Switch character, and they have a very, very good Super Switch. Their main viability for me in this character is actually a sub because of their switch ability and because of their conditional boost being a 2.25 conditional boost with a Super Boss little ability. So what happens is if the character has over 10 million HP, they apply the Super Boss marker, which can go through full immunity, and they are just an absolute weapon for Kazuna. If you can find a way to get them on the team, you basically want to bring them on any Super Boss team because it guarantees you an extra 2.25 damage, which is monstrous, absolutely monstrous through full immunity. No matter what the case, they are just very, very good. They are a five times captain, two driven and powerhouse. They do end of turn damage in their captain, which is really, really cool as well. And their switch ability gives you, starts you at a 1.6 chain multiplier going up to uh, 35.0. Uh, times very similar to like the Wano Law Strat. If you get their Super Slot, you start at the 2.5 and you go up that way. You re very rarely ever use that. But the Switch Ability, removing Paralysis, giving themselves a matching orb is really, really nice as well. For that, I kind of want to move them into Amazing because like they do have that viability as Captain. But for me, I always find myself running King and Queen over this particular unit as a Captain. In saying that, it's not that it's a bad thing. You just never need two of this guy. And girl, I should say. You, you never really need two of them. Uh, where King and Queen, having them either hybrid... Or, uh, having them either hybrid it up together. Or running the two of them to get the cooldowns. Just works so much nicer in my eyes. You could easily make an argument for um, them to be in the amazing slot for me. Um, or Because of Kazuna. Or if you are running Driven Powerhouse where the enemies have over 10 million in stuff like... Um, what's it called? Arenas and whatnot. But... I'm only ever using this character as a sub. Like, I'm only, only, only ever using this character as a sub. And uh, for that reason, I'm just going to put them in S plus sub. Like, you could easily make an argument for me, like, that they are they are here. Like, you can easily make the, like, you can easily make the argument for me that they are here. But in my personal uh, experience on Japan, from this character's release, and on Global from where, where we are right now, 
they, they find their way as a sub. That, that's basically where they sit, and they always sit under something like six-star Yamato, as um, they just sort of... If you're not getting their sort of um, conditional, you are utilizing them for stuff like the uh, switch ability. They have a lot of good uh, supports. You can use stuff like Dofi for the orb boost with their switch ability. You can also use um, the... Because they do damage as well, you can also uh, use stuff like Smoker if you're running quick teams and stuff like that as well. They are a great unit. They are a great sub. But as a captain, there's just better options up here. And King and Queen in my eyes and like Fire Tank Pirates for driven teams are just a much better option even stuff like Versa Kainu falls in that category as well. And even Moria. Like, I would rather run Moria as the captain and then bring the um, the sub of uh, Page 1 and Ulti. Having a look in here as well, I actually kind of want to move um, Germa down to S sub. They are very, very good. But, like, you're basically only using them for their captain swap and getting the rainbow damage. I don't use them so much anymore compared to all of these other units here. These S plus subs. I use the, all of these subs, like, a lot for particular pieces of content. Uh, where these particular subs here, like Chopper could probably make an argument to go up here. Um, but these particular subs compared to these subs, like I use these a hell of a lot more than I use something like Germa. So I'm going to move Germa down to S plus, uh, to S sub. But again, if you say he's an S plus sub, I, I do not disagree with you, but just through my personal play style, that's where I would actually keep Germa. All right. Taking a look at the new Super Sugo Fest unit. We did get a new Super Sugo Fest, Sugo Fest unit. Technically we got two. But we will discuss that. Yamato. Yamato is finally here over on the global side of the game. Came very, very early. And yes, I do have egg on my face because I said it was not coming. Shout out to my boy Pappy. He did predict it very, very quickly. He did say it was coming at the start of November and never, never doubt the captain. Simple as that. Never doubt the captain. But I was wrong. I did say it wasn't coming until next year. With the sync, it did make a lot of sense for Yamato to come early. I just didn't understand how they were going to like slide her in. But they managed to do it. So shout out to, um, shout out to the global team. And here we are. So... With that, Yamato 6-star. We're going to talk Yamato 6-star first. We're going to put Yamato 6-star in uh, the God tier category. Yamato 6-star is a driven striker-based captain and uh, very, very strong for driven and striker teams. She can make Wano Orb. She has the additional damage, 1.75. And if you can pop that off, you get a lot of extra damage. She also has the chain buff mechanic and then gives the chain multiplier. She can lock her orbs. She can do some crazy shenanigans. She has damage reduction. She has the built-in uh, utility, in well, not utility, in terms of the chain multiplier buff in her captain if you're below 50%. So you can do some crazy, crazy shenanigans there. She has great hybrid potential with stuff like Versa Kaino and Versa Ace. And just all very, very nice. She just works really, really good under the driven powerhouse category. Uh, dri driven striker category and int based category as well and she's basically the go forward for int teams and driven based teams as captains because she has a great final tap and she has a great super typing as well so nevertheless she's easily a god tier character i really really enjoy using yamato six star and i really enjoy saying yamato six plus so with that we are going to put her in god tier there so she's going to sit there nicely and uh, we not much else to say there so the final character we're going to talk about is Yamato 6 Plus. So Yamato 6 Plus, again, is going to go up here. And very, very similar to her 6 star, she is an absolute god. A very, very good character. An absolute god tier. Um, who's better out of 6 Plus and 6 star? I don't really know. Like, and I don't really care. Both of them work very, very nicely. And um, they're both very, very strong. The 6 Plus Yamato, absolutely great with stuff like Roger. And um, very, very good uh, as a free spirit character. She does pretty much the same thing as 6-star, but she just does it all for free spirits. Both of them have bind removal utility in their kit, which makes them an absolute dream boat when you are partnering up with someone like Roger. And they are just very, very, very good. Like, very, very good. So, if you have Roger, I would keep Yamato 6-star, because I feel like Yamato 6-star needs, and driven, like, strikers need them more. But if you don't have Roger, using the 6+, plus, and sort of chopping and changing between the two can work quite nicely. When it comes to PvP, they have their own uh, own uh, benefits to, for defending the 6 stars better. The 6 plus is better for attacking. But pick up those 100 skulls because the 100 skulls are going to come in handy moving forward. And they are just very, very strong units. Because of the release of Yamato 6 plus, I am going to make some changes to the god tier category. I do want to drop three particular characters. Because we have a new driven leader, these two characters here for me are going to drop their way into amazing. Kid is still really, really good. Kainu is still really, really good, but I do want to sort of keep a top five sort of situation going on up here. Yamato, I guess you could argue that it is the same character for me, or you could easily argue that Ace Akainu is the same character for me, uh, but they do two very different things, so I'm going to separate the two of them because they do, they are just different. They, in my eyes, they are just different. Ace, I'm going to drop down into Amazing as well. He's a very, very good unit, but again, most of the time, 
as a captain, you want to be running something like Roger, you want to be running something like Yamato 6 plus, and then using Ace as a sub potential, but you can easily run him as a captain for his special reverse, which is really nice. A Kainu you can use for his conditional with something like Yamato 6 star in a hybrid situation as well, and they all just work really, really hunky-dory together. With that said, like, they, they're just, they're great units, and they definitely are god tier, but I do want to sort of keep this as a top five situation. Uh, but in terms of like who sits on the cusp, these three would be the next three that sort of move up into the god tier. If we were doing something like a top 10, or we were even like comparing with the way that these two characters would be one, these two characters would be one, the top five would look like um, Kid, Ace versus Kainu, because they, like, they are the characters that you want to sort of level up. I guess if you have one Yamato, you have two. If you have Ace and a Kainu, you have Ace, you have a Kainu. So I guess if you want to make that argument to me that they, that they are in the top five, they definitely are. But we do need to compare the characters separately as they do two different things. So that's the new tier list for November of 2021. Let me know your thoughts and opinions in the comments section below. I would love to hear what you guys have to say. If you agree with stuff, if you don't agree with stuff, like I said, it's all subjective, but... Well, it's not all subjective, I guess. But, like, I'd love to hear what your thoughts and opinions. If you disagree, if you don't, remember to keep it um, all positive in the comment section as well, as I do love to hear where you guys are coming from and your thoughts and opinions on the Legends that are in the global side of the game anyway. But while you're down there, don't forget to smash that like button for me if you're new to the channel. Hit that big red subscribe button too. But, guys, wherever you are in this beautiful world, please remember to enjoy the rest of your day. As always, homies, I thank you guys for watching, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Let's.